To celebrate the one-year anniversary of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the fighting game group known as 2G Gaming hosted a Smash tournament known as Congo Saga. It was a massive competition that featured nearly a thousand noteworthy players, and the event was themed around the Donkey Kong series of games. And so, I decided to go ahead and compete. But this time, I decided to not only just compete in one event, but rather, three. So instead of just entering one event, I also entered some side series events. And also, based on the results of one of these events, I'd be entered into a fourth tournament. It was time for me to put my skills to the test across four different tourneys. How well would I be able to perform in four different styles? As I said, some of the top players in the world were entering this event. So all I could really do was hope for the best as I entered four different events here at Congo Saga. Humans, I'm Yo Schiller, and welcome back to another episode of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Road to Sakurai. Today's video was another tourney focused video, and normally when I attend these tourneys, I tend to vlog quite a fair share of the event. But this time around, aside from recording some standard B roll footage, most of what I recorded consisted of various matches that I played, and not much more beyond that. Guys, I made it! I finally made it! And I got a pretty good parking spot too. But okay. I'm not exactly sure how I want to structure this video just yet. Sorry, let me align this. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to structure this video because normally when I go to these events I do one tournament and that lasts all day. But today I'm not just doing one tournament, I'm doing three. And depending on how I rank in one of those tournaments, I'll be doing a fourth tournament tomorrow. So the first tournament starts in about an hour and a half from now. It's 3.30, it starts at 5. The first tournament is called Jungle Hijinx. It's a gimmick tournament with items on and random stages on and it's it's fun it's single elimination it should be pretty quick and I guess of the tournaments I have to do I'm glad that that's the first one I get to do the least serious of the bunch first then I'm doing a squad strike tournament where I pick three characters and then my opponent picks three characters and then we just go at each other and I think that single elimination as well I'm not 100% sure about that but that one starts at seven then the actual serious Super Smash Bros. Ultimate singles tournament that thousands of people came here for for me, my bracket starts at 8.30, so it's going to be a long day, but for the time being, I'm going to practice. I will structure this video somehow. There's timestamps in the description in case you want to see my results in a specific tournament. I've never done a format like this before, but hey, maybe I'll be really good at the items tournament and terrible at the serious tournament. Maybe something will work out, but at least by playing three tournaments, I have three shots to defeat players, right? So, I got my hat. I got my... Controller, let's see what happens. The venue for Congo Saga was the same venue that I attended for SoCal Chronicles and Nightmare in Smashville, so it felt a little weird to record certain pieces of footage since it may appear to be too similar to footage that I've recorded in the past. But on the plus side, I did want to point out that I received a Yoshi pin to put on my controller cable, courtesy of Spiff Space, so that much is unique. All right, well, I'm about to begin my first tournament, the item gimmick tournament. But before I do, I want to give a shout out to these guys, Spiff. They gave me... They gave me this cool Yoshi egg pin, so now when I unplug my controller, I know which one is mine. And it just works out that way. Do you guys have that Suarez sign? What happened to that? Oh, that was there it is, yay! All right, time to go compete. But even so, I attended Congo Saga at a familiar venue, and I prepared myself for my first tourney of the day. Jungle Hijinx is a single elimination tournament in which players participate in a timed three stock match with all items enabled, all Donkey Kong related stages allowed, stage morph activated, and final smash meter involved. Each set was best two out of three, and because each match had stage morph enabled, each player was supposed to pick a stage. My first opponent was a player named Justin. When we picked our stages to keep in the theme of the event and the wackiness of the tournament, I selected Jungle Japes and he selected Congo Falls. Since this tournament utilized items, I thought it'd be wise to play as Ice Climbers. This would allow me to use two items at once. Justin chose me Gunner. Our first match was surprisingly close. Each of us obtained our fair share of items, and we each had assist trophies that fought one another, and each 
each of us performed a fair share of stylish attacks and foolish actions. I lost my first two stocks due to the Me Gunner's final smash being activated by the final smash meter, and I lost the final stock due to a beetle item. Despite mashing as quickly as I could, I just couldn't break free. How did the CPUs do it? And thus, I lost the first game. For the second game, I picked Congo Jungle as my stage, and my opponent picked Congo Falls. Early on in the game, I was able to quickly take a stock off my opponent after knocking him off while he carried a hammer. However, an unfortunate situation happened right after once I was hit by a barrel. I immediately air dodged to try to make it back to the stage, and unfortunately, due to the stage layout, I just wasn't able to grab the ledge. Such things will happen on an older stage like this where players can pass through the bottommost platform. For the remainder of the game, I was able to hold the lead for quite a while, but my opponent eventually got the Daybreak item, an Invincibility Star, and a Smash Ball. Thus, I lost the game and I was eliminated from the Jungle Hijinx tournament. But all in all, it was a fun time. Yeah, I was a bit bummed that I blew the leads that I had, and then I was bummed that I didn't get to make it beyond the first round, but I figured that the point of the tournament was to be insanely gimmicky and slightly unfair anyway. I had more fun watching other more competitive players play their matches, and all in all, I'm glad that I participated. I didn't have much to lose here. Now it's time for me to compete in my ultimate singles match. It's gonna start in about eh, 15 minutes from now, but Hopefully I can at least defeat one opponent in that tournament, because if I go at least 2-2 in one of these tournaments, then I get to reward myself with a treat. So that's going to start soon, and I hope to do well. The next tourney was the main event, and it was a more serious traditional tourney. This was a double elimination competition, like most Smash tournaments. But depending on where in the bracket I got eliminated, I'd be placed into another tournament bracket altogether. So in reality, it was a quadruple elimination, but that leads into a separate tournament, so... This singles tournament is just double elimination, and for now, we'll call it Smash Ultimate Singles. For the first round of Smash Ultimate Singles, I faced off against a player named Lime. He played Richter, and for the first game, we went to Pokemon Stadium 2. When I play against defensive characters like Richter, I don't really know how to approach them. When I was able to get in, I managed to land some decent combos and heavy hits, but more often than not, I had a difficult time landing back on the stage as soon as he hit me with just one attack. I just couldn't figure out what the best way to approach him was. While I was able to get two stocks off him, I only got a second stock off once I was close to losing the game altogether. But once again, once he hit me, I just didn't know what to do, and he definitely figured out that I was clueless. Thus, Lime won the first game. For the second game, we went to Smashville. Much to my surprise, I was able to take a stock off of him within the first 30 seconds of the match. Despite this, Lime still held his ground, and I was still clueless on how to approach a character with so many unique spacing options. Despite having a great lead at the beginning of the match, I still wound up falling into all of his traps. And once again, I managed to get two stocks off him, but it was a little too late. He quickly turned the game around, pressured me on the edge of the stage, and defeated me. Thus, I was knocked into the loser's bracket of Smash Ultimate Singles. With that said, I was still placed into the second round of the loser's bracket, which is definitely appreciated. And my opponent was a Mario player named Nubby. For the first match, we went to Pokemon Stadium 2, and the aim of the game seemed to be that he tried to rush me down before I could rush him down. He had an aggressive playstyle, and he landed some nasty combos on me multiple times. There was a pretty interesting moment where I miraculously didn't get damage from one of Mario's attacks when I recovered from the legend correctly, and I was able to spike him right afterward and take off his second stock. And the match was close all throughout, but Fortunately, once Nubby knocked me into the air by reflecting one of my own eggs, it was game over for me as soon as Mario chased me around. The second game was not nearly as close as the first. I chose Battlefield as my stage, and I chose the Jungle Japes variant of it since I wanted to keep with the Donkey Kong theming of the entire tournament. Sure, I had a few missed inputs throughout the match, but that wasn't the main reason I lost. Nubby knew his stuff, and he stylishly took off my final stock by comboing me to the stage of ceiling with Mario's classic up air, up special string. And as a result, I was eliminated from the tournament. My low ranking placed me into what is known as the amateur bracket, a bracket for players that went 1-2 or 0-2 at the tournament, like myself. That tournament began on the second day of Congo Saga, and I'll discuss that more later. For now, there was still one more tournament on this first night that I had to record. Woo. Well, I have not been doing great. That's two tourneys now where I've gone 0-2, technically. So, I have one more tourney tonight. That is the Squad Strike Tournament. I will see what happens there. And then because I did poorly in my singles tournament, I'll be back here tomorrow because I've now been placed into an amateur bracket. So hopefully, I can at least beat two people there and I can feel better about myself. But for now, the Squad Strike Tournament starts in about 16 minutes. So that's up next. The final tournament of the night was a Squad Strike tourney, and the premise was simple. All players would play the Squad Strike mode, pick three characters, and bam, play everything else like a traditional tourney. However, it still was a single elimination tournament, so we all had to choose our characters wisely. Well, I normally cycle between four characters anyway, so I just chose three of them for a team. 
Yoshi, Ice Climbers, and Little Mac. I figured that all three of these characters had an easy way of racking up the percentage of my opponents, and all three of them had options to instantly KO my opponent in case they immediately came into a match. In other words, all three of these characters could easily start a match and easily finish a match. My first opponent of the Squad Strike tourney was Aimer, a longtime friend of mine. Or rather, it would have been Aimer, but alas, he was unable to attend the event. So his disqualification immediately moved me into the next round, where I played against a player named Garu. Garu chose Pikachu, Pokemon Trainer, and King Dedede as his characters. For our first game, we went to Pokemon Stadium 2. I decided to start things off as the Ice Climbers. I figured that Yoshi and Little Mac would stay in the back of my team since it'd be easier to land a finishing blow with them, and it'd be easier for the Ice Climbers to simply rack up my opponent's percentage. I was able to defeat Garo's Pikachu just using one Ice Climber, but it didn't take long for his next character, King Dedede, to come in and clobber me. Still, I did what I could with the Ice Climbers before Yoshi and Little Mac had to step in. His Dedede made quick work of my Yoshi, so it was up to Little Mac. I played very cautiously, perhaps a bit too cautiously. I took out King DDD and that just left Pokemon Trainer, but one good hit from Charizard was enough to take me out of the match. For the second game, I chose the Omega version of the Jungle Jape stage. I chose the same characters, and my opponent mostly chose the same characters, he just swapped Pikachu with Bowser instead. And that was a wise move on his part, as his Bowser definitely harmed my Yoshi. But I was lucky enough to be able to stage spike the character. But King Dedede came in and practically took out my Yoshi with very little effort. I then tried to have Little Mac hold my team's ground, but that didn't work out too well. That left me with the Ice Climbers, and they started to make a comeback. But again, a powerful hit from Charizard ended the game for me. And with that, I was eliminated from the Squad Strike tourney. I couldn't beat anybody. I couldn't even take a game off anybody. I got, yeah, I got bodied pretty hard. And I tried to pick stages that I thought would mess up my opponents and give me an advantage. And I, there were just so many situations where I just didn't know what to do. I registered for three different tournaments, gimmick tournaments, squad strike, regular, smash, singles. And I didn't defeat a single player in any of them. Sure, I got a buy in one of them. That counts as a victory when you look at my overall score, but that doesn't really mean I'm getting better. So for now, I'm in the amateur bracket for a tourney that's happening tomorrow. So I'll be back tomorrow and we'll see what happens then. Hopefully, better results. I'm trying to stay optimistic, but for now, I'm gonna go home, get some rest, look over my footage a bit, and we'll see if anything goes better. All right, back for day two of this tournament, now that I'm in the amateur bracket, because apparently I don't know how to play this game. But I'm still going to try to do my best. And again, if I go at least 2-2 two, two in this bracket, then I'll reward myself with something. I'm going to be playing against a bunch of people. But my 2-2 two, two rule still applies. If I defeat at least two people in this bracket before I get eliminated, then I'll reward myself with some sort of treat. So hopefully I can do well. I don't want to be a laughing stock and go 0-2 again, so we'll see what happens. But for now, let me grab my hat, got my pass, got my bag with my controller and camera equipment in it. Let's do it. Players who didn't win more than two rounds of the singles tourney were automatically entered into the amateur bracket. That meant that the amateur bracket contained 525 players. Most of these players didn't bother to show up to the tourney, but I decided I would. And so the amateur bracket began. Due to an uneven amount of players, most players, including myself, were automatically placed into the second round of the amateur bracket. But additionally, as I said earlier, most players didn't even bother to show up to the amateur bracket. As such, my first opponent was disqualified and I got to advance to round three. Yo, Schiller, last call for Schiller, I'll give you the key button. <laughs> hydro, last call for Hydro. And in round three, my opponent was a player named Mona. Mona decided to play as Fox, and I played as Yoshi. We decided that we would start this set on Smashville, and our game was pretty close. I managed to stage spike him on the first stock, but he took advantage of my openings and quickly made the match even again. He then took the lead, and eventually, he won the game. For the second game, we played as the same characters, but this time I took him to Battlefield. Once again, I was able to stage spike him pretty early on in the match, but Mona still kept up a quick and aggressive playstyle. Things eventually got a little too close for comfort, and Mona was very close to winning the match. One good hit from him, and I would have been knocked into the loser's bracket, but a properly timed ground pound allowed me to win the game. So that brought us to the third and final game. He decided to take us back to Smashville. Early on in the game, I went for a stage spike again, which kind of worked, but that was mostly due to Mona recovering incorrectly and not because I slammed him against the stage like I did previously. Even so, I definitely needed this early stock lead as it allowed me to better play against his Fox's aggression. Still, the game wound up being close. I lost my second stock and we were both down to our last stock. Then Mona started playing a bit more defensively. And finally, I landed Yoshi 
Yoshi's back air, which was just enough to send Fox into the blast zone and allow me to win the game. My next opponent in the amateur bracket was a player named Sickleus. I played as Yoshi once again, and Sickleus played as Terry. We started things off on Pokemon Stadium 2, and Sickleus showed very early on that he knew his Terry combos and that it would take more than one of Yoshi's spikes to defeat him. The game was close, often with Sickleus in the lead. But once we were down to both our final stocks, I didn't let up, and neither did he. I tried whatever attacks I could until I finally got Terry off stage, and finally, I was able to land one final blow to win the game. For the next game, Sickleus switched to Fox, and we went to Battlefield. I managed to take a stock early on in the game, and I managed to land a stage spike not too long afterward. I tried being fancy and taking away his third and final stock, and that wound up working against me. Even so, I was able to win the game, and that allowed me to move on to the next round of the amateur bracket. Thank you for the matches, Sickleus! My next opponent was a player named Argon. He played as Pokemon Trainer, and I played as Yoshi. I just tried to stay on him and not let Ivysaur grab me. I was able to take a stock, and from there, Argon tried to defeat me using Pokemon Trainer's Charizard. He landed some heavy blows, and yet I was able to take off a second stock before I even lost my first. However, Argon quickly caught up, as he was able to successfully take off my second stock after gimping my recovery as Ivysaur. He also managed to endure some of my hits that could have ended the match, but in the end, he decided to use Charizard's Flare Blitz, and he missed. Thus, I won the first game. For the second game, we both chose the same characters, and he decided to play on Final Destination. He self-destructed on his first stock about 10 seconds into the match, thus putting me in a large, advantageous state for the majority of it. He tried to go for several different kill moves, and while I managed to dodge and block most of them, he eventually got one that managed to take off my stock. But quickly afterward, I seeked my revenge and took off his second stock. Now on his final stock, Argon tried to keep landing Charizard's Flare Blitz and Back Air. Now with both of us at one stock apiece, the game could have gone to anybody. Fortunately, I quickly plopped Charizard into the air with an egg, and I was barely able to land an up smash attack before Charizard landed again. Thus, I moved on to the next round, and actually this put me into the top 48 of the amateur bracket. On the winner's side, no less. Yeah, top 48 out of 500 or so players sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But that only means that the opponents are going to get tougher from here. My next opponent was a player named Mika. I stuck to Yoshi, and he played as Jigglypuff. We decided to go to Battlefield for the first game, and both of us heavily relied on our aerial attacks. However, while we both landed our fair share of attacks, Mika's Jigglypuff knew how to punish me whenever I'd land back on the ground. Fortunately, I was able to spike Jigglypuff on the first stock, and although Mika almost made it back to the stage, rather impressively at that, I had a bit of a scare tactic against the poor balloon Pokemon to ensure that that wouldn't happen. But shortly afterward, Mika got his revenge and took a stock off me too. And wouldn't you know it, Mika got my second stock by scaring me into using my recovery early as well. The game did wind up being pretty close, and fortunately I was able to win the game by breaking Jigglypuff's shield via a ground pound. Kind of a humorous way to finish things up. For the second game, Mika chose to return to Battlefield, and this time with a different stage background. He proceeded to take off my first stock in under 10 seconds. I didn't even land a hit on him. In fact, throughout the entire game, he continuously landed rest combos and bodied me. So yeah, he won the second game. For the third game, we decided to finish things on Battlefield, once again with a different background. And although this game wasn't nearly as short as the previous one, he proceeded to make quick work of me. Whatever I did in the first game wasn't working anymore. He won the third game, which knocked me into the loser's bracket. From there, my next opponent was named Olympia. He played as Inkling, and to start things off, we played on the town and city stage. He held the lead for most of the match, but I started to make a comeback. I tried to even things out, and I got pretty close. It came down to our last stocks, and as most players who face Inkling know, death is almost inevitable once an Inkling buries you with a roller. Alas, I lost the first game. For the second game, we chose the same characters, and we went to Kalos Pokemon League. Once again, the game was pretty close, but I just kept getting buried, and I just kept losing stocks. So, I lost the game. However, the Inkling didn't finish me off by burying me. I lost my final stock because I had an unfortunate recovery. Eh, even if I did make it back to the stage properly, I'm convinced that Olympia would have defeated me anyway. Olympia's victory means my defeat, and my defeat means that I was eliminated from the amateur bracket. You know, as I lost more and more matches, I started to feel doubtful about my skills as a competitive Super Smash Bros. Ultimate player. Yeah, I knew a lot of top-level players would be here, but being unable to defeat a single player in any tournament was starting to bum me out. I went 0-2 in the singles tournament, and if that was the only thing here that I competed in, then this would have been a very short video. But thanks to the amateur bracket, I actually managed to perform quite well. And the players in the amateur bracket were no joke either. Even when I'd earned quick, easy stocks, my opponents were able to turn things around and make very quick comebacks. Even more so, Congo Saga marks the first time I competed in an event and had a score better than 2-2. Well, that's actually not technically true. I first earned that score at a Wednesday Night Fights local tournament about two or three weeks ago, and I actually recorded the replay of that match because it was a momentous occasion to me. But this was the first time I had a score better than 2-2 at a major tournament. And although I technically had the score of a player that had gone 3-2 thanks to a round one bye when I competed at EVO 2019, 
This is the first time in one of my Road to Sakurai videos where I visibly defeated at least three players on screen. And if we're counting players that got disqualified and allowed me to move on to later rounds, then this is the best result that I've ever done in a tournament, period. Sure, many players didn't show up to the amateur bracket, but I defeated a few players that did show up, and I made it into the top 48. So no matter how you slice it, I advanced through more rounds at Congo Saga than I ever did at any other event. And that's a much better ending for this video than what things could have been if there had not been an amateur bracket at all. So, thank you Congo Saga for hosting an amateur bracket. Of course, I can't let any of this get to my head. Yes, my results were okay, but I'm still just in the amateur bracket. And it was 48th place at that. I'm not discrediting my score or disrespecting any of my opponents. This was a tough bracket with many talented players. But it wasn't the toughest bracket. It's not like I got 48th place at the entire tournament, you know? I still have a long way to go. And I think that for the next episode of Road to Sakurai, I want to reflect on my skill level overall and see how much I've grown since I first started this journey. The game has been out for a year now, so now would be the most appropriate time for me to start reflecting on everything that I've done so far. But if nothing else, I'm glad that Congo Saga existed. It was a good celebration for the one year anniversary of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. For now, that wraps up this episode of Road to Sakurai. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. Unless anything crazy happens, the next thing I plan to do for this series is reflect on my overall journey and take a look at everything. But for now, bye-bye, humans. Whoosh. All right, I went at least 2-2. Two, two. So I'm hanging out with these guys, and I've got myself a vanilla shake, which I don't actually think I've ever gotten from In-N-Out, so. Really? Hmm? I mean, it's vanilla. It's good. It's I like it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll just win a lot. I went 0 2 in pools, but I went at least 2 2 in the in the amateur bracket, so I'm 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 feeling good. Alright. That's, that's, that's all I got. Alright, I'm gonna try and down this. Alright. It's not healthy. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> hey everyone, if you enjoyed what you saw and want to see more, be sure to click the subscribe icon underneath the video. Be sure to click on the bell icon to be notified when a new video is out. Also, one of the best ways to support me is to follow me on Twitter. On there, you can see announcements, updates, and previews for all of my upcoming content. My tag is at Ryu Yoshiller. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all in future videos. Whoosh!